This was meant to be an easy video. Is the Elsa Synergy 2 capable to run at frequencies of a TNT2 Ultra? I started testing with the SuperSocket 7 AMD K63 Plus at 600MHz. But I quickly realized that the Synergy 2 was severely bottlenecked by this platform. The only other system I had at hand was an AMD Athlon XP 2400 Plus on the Gigabyte GA7N400 Pro 2, which I have recapped a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, I ran into a few issues with this board. The board supports the dual channel memory architecture, but when I placed the memory in the appropriate slots, I got memory errors. Individually and in single channel mode, the modules do not produce errors. I also attempted to clean the socket in case the problem would be there, but to no avail. And on top of this, the board is suffering from very loud coil whine. Despite all the unforeseen issues, I will go ahead with the original plan and overclock the Elsa Synergy 2. I also disabled the onboard sound with no other expansion card but the graphics card. The Elsa Synergy 2 is a TNT2 chip with a PCI interface. Let's give this card the best chance by not clogging the PCI bus with unnecessary data. Any game sounds are recorded afterwards and added in post to enhance the viewing experience. The Synergy 2 is a professional graphics card with its own drivers, provided by Elsa. But the card seems to be working fine with the reference drivers from Nvidia for their TNT and TNT2 graphics chips. The so-called detonator drivers are no longer available on Nvidia's website unless you're looking for the latest version. But you can go to the Vogon's vintage driver library to get an older version. The driver to pick is a science of its own, as you will see in this video. But a good rule is to get a driver that was released around the same time the game you want to play was released. Those drivers will have the most optimizations included. Future drivers will most likely focus on newer generations of graphics chips and will no longer optimize for the old ones. More often than not, performance decreases with newer drivers due to additional overhead or implementation changes. For the tests today I will be using three versions of the earlier detonator releases. 2.08, 6.31 and 8.05. I also tried various versions of 3 and 5 of the drivers, but none of them worked with the Synergy 2. Version 3 was locked to a resolution of 640 by 480 and in version 5, 3D applications just froze without the possibility to recover. The TNT2 is a refined TNT chip. The fully featured TNT2 chip was mainly sold in three flavors. The TNT2 with a core and memory clock of 125 and 150 MHz respectively. The TNT2 Pro has an increased core and memory clock of 143 and 166 MHz. And the premium model, the TNT2 Ultra with clock rates of 150 MHz for the core and 183 MHz for the memory. There is conflicting information online. But it looks like the TNT2 Pro received a further reduction to 220 nanometers when it was released a few months after the TNT2 and the TNT2 Ultra. We also get support for double the memory from 16 to 32 megabytes. There were also different lower tier models with only 16 megabytes of memory and half the memory bus, like the TNT2 M64. The Elsa Synergy 2 is clocked at 125 and 150 megahertz for core and memory which is equivalent to the standard TNT2. Before I start any benchmarks, I checked this passively cooled card with a thermal camera. This chip produces so much heat to a point where you can no longer touch the heatsink for more than a few seconds. The highest temperature I could measure was 62 degrees on the heatsink. The chip itself is probably a few degrees hotter. This card probably should have been equipped with a fan, but it looks like Elsa tried to reduce the cost. For my tests, I just placed a case fan next to the card to blow away excessive heat. I don't want to damage this card by accident just because there isn't enough cooling. The temperature immediately starts to drop and after a few minutes it levels off at around 38 degrees. Now we are ready to run some benchmarks. And here is where the trouble started with the drivers, particularly with the VSync option. The detonator driver 2.08 do not allow to control the setting in the control panel. You have to use a third party tool like River Tuner, which you can see here. Under the DirectX options, you have a tab dedicated to VSync. Unfortunately, this doesn't always work, and there were some occasions where things just didn't behave as expected. But I had the best results with this tool. 
When we look at the 3D Mark results, we can see that drivers 6.31 and 8.05 score higher with VSync enabled compared to VSync disabled. For driver 2.08, it is the opposite. So I had to dig a bit deeper to see why that is. In game 1, the race, the frame rates are consistently higher with VSync on. I have tested this multiple times and I always got the same results. When we have a look at the second game, the first person, driver 2.08 seems to have an issue with this benchmark. With VSync on, the results of this particular scene are the lowest. This is the reason why driver 2.08 scores higher with VSync off. Overclocking the card does improve the performance, but the gains stay below 10%, even if we overclock to the level of the TNT2 Ultra. And the behavior of driver 2.08 remains the same as well, just with higher numbers. Just in case you are interested, here are all the results on one page. I don't think it makes much sense to get deeper into those synthetic benchmark results. And while we are at the topic of overclocking, there are a few tools you can use. The first one I want to show you is PowerStrip. This tool will probably work with a wide variety of cards including ATI and Voodoo cards. It also provides the option to enable or disable VSync. Another tool which I like to use for NVIDIA cards is River Tuner. It provides a lot of information about the card and allows you to increase the clock frequencies. You also have the possibility to control the VSync option. And finally, if you don't want to use any third party application, you can use the NVIDIA driver control panel. Unfortunately, this only works with drivers later than 2.08 and you need to enable it by adding information to the Windows registry. You can find information online if you search for NVIDIA cool bits. It is so cool that it even has a Wikipedia page. Once the information has been added to the registry, you will get a few more tabs and settings in the NVIDIA driver control panel. Now you will be able to access the clock frequencies under the new hardware options tab and VSync can be controlled under the Direct3D settings and then more Direct3D. Now let's have a look at a game that was released around the same time the first TNT chips were released. You could purchase Unreal in May 1998, two months after the official launch of the River TNT chip. Since the TNT2 chip is just a better version of the TNT, I thought it is the perfect game to run some tests. I can tell you already that there were no surprises benchmarking with Unreal. Everything worked as expected. And although I couldn't set the VSync option in driver 2.08 in the NVIDIA control panel, River Tuner allowed to enable and disable the setting reliably. The game is running at a resolution of 800x600 with high details and is patched to version 22F. With VSync off, the detonator drivers 2.08 deliver an average frame rate of 61 with a standard TNT2. The minimum and the maximum frames are 32.5 and 91 respectively. Overclocking the chip to TNT2 Pro Clocks increases the performance by around 9%. For those gains we have to overclock the chip by almost 15% and the memory by almost 11%. We gain another 6-7% over the standard TNT2 if we overclock to TNT2 Ultra specifications. Before I switch on VSync, let's see how the other drivers perform. With driver 6.31, we see the average frames drop below 60 for the regular TNT2. This is a lot worse than with the previous driver version. In fact, all results are lower. The summary for this driver version in Unreal is the following. If you run your TNT2 Ultra with driver 6.31, you get the same performance as a standard TNT2 with driver 2.08. Let's move on to version 8.05. If we are looking really close, we may be able to see a slight improvement over the previous results. We are talking about a 1 frame per second or so, but they are still far behind the results of driver 2.08. Let's switch on VSync and start over with driver 2.08. The rendered frames reduce because we will lock the frames to the refresh rate of the monitor. I have mine set to 60Hz, and therefore the frame rate is capped at 60 frames per second. Compared to VSync off, the minimum frame rates improve slightly, and the rest of the results are as expected. With driver 6.31, the behavior of VSync is the same as in the previous slide. However, 
the results are quite a bit lower compared to the older driver. And it gets worse. The minimum frame rates drop by over 5 frames per second. With those results, I would avoid this driver for Unreal. There is not much to say to driver 8.05. It is very similar to 6.31. It may actually be a bit worse when we compare the minimum frame rates. In the next three slides, I have combined all the results grouped by the driver version. This should give you an idea how the different frequencies of TNT2, TNT2 Pro and the TNT2 Ultra relate. As expected, each bump in core and memory frequency improves the benchmark results. Driver 2.08 delivers much higher minimum frame rates compared to 6.31. In general, you see an overall drop in performance. Driver 8.05 is a bit better, except for the minimum frame rates at lower frequencies. But by no means close to 2.08. Let's rearrange the data a bit and do some more investigation. Instead of looking at one specific driver and compare different chip frequencies, let's compare driver versions by leaving the frequency constant. Here is the standard TNT2 with 125 MHz on the core and the memory with 150 MHz. Driver 2.08 is clearly the best choice with VSync off. The performance with both newer drivers is worse, with not much difference between them. The TNT2 Pro lifts the results overall, but behaves similarly to the regular TNT2. And the TNT2 Ultra delivers the best results, again with driver 2.08. The results of both newer drivers are almost identical, just quite a bit lower compared to the oldest driver. With VSync switched on, driver 2.08 is still the best choice for the regular TNT2, especially if you look at the minimum frame rates. You get an extra 5 frames, which actually may be the difference between smooth gameplay and noticeable stuttering. The TNT2 Pro delivers almost identical results as the standard TNT2 with VSync on. I'm sure you wouldn't notice any difference. And finally, no surprises here, the TNT2 Ultra delivers the best results when VSync is switched on. Driver 2.08 is ahead of the other two. Here is the summary for the TNT2. The best average frame rate is delivered by driver 2.08 with VSync off. If however you value the highest minimum frame rates more, then you should use driver 2.08 with VSync switched on. Your average frame rate will drop, but you get 3 frames added to your minimums. Moving on to the TNT2 Pro. And here, driver 2.08 in combination with VSync off gives the best results for average as well as minimum frame rates. But the difference is so minimal that you probably can leave VSync on as well. And finally, the TNT2 Ultra pushes the results a bit higher. And there you have it. Unreal works best with driver 2.08 and I would leave VSync enabled. But this is totally up to you. It solely depends what you value more, a higher average frame rate or a better minimum frame rate. Let's move on to a game where I did notice a difference. And VSync actually did spoil the experience. Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. The footage you see right now was recorded with driver 8.05. Unfortunately, I could not enable VSync with driver 2.08. There is no option in the NVIDIA driver control panel and tools like River Tuner or PowerStrip also didn't work. On the left side, you see a replay of a race with VSync on. On the right side is the same replay but with VSync off. The graphic settings are medium to high at a resolution of 800 by 600. But that doesn't matter since I won't go through benchmark results. If you pay attention to the frame rate, you will see a noticeable difference between VSync on and off. The game engine drops the frame rate to 30 once the card is no longer able to produce more than 60 frames per second. 30 is half the refresh rate of the monitor and it is supposed to help with the reduction of screen tearing. Once we fall below 30 frames per second, the game engine drops further to 20 frames per second, which is one third of the refresh rate. This is a mechanism of VSync which we haven't seen in Unreal. Just have a look at the footage and you will be able to decide if you'd rather play with VSync on or off. I for sure would go with VSync off. Wow, this video took way longer to make than I thought. 
Overclocking the Elsa Synergy 2 was not particularly exciting. It just worked and there weren't any issues. In hindsight, that is not too surprising after I found out that there was a card from Hercules. The Dynamite TNT 2 Ultra, which clocked the core at 175 MHz and the memory at 200 MHz. That probably might be something for a future video. I am for sure not done with this chip from Nvidia. And it seems to be true that the latest driver may not always be the best choice. Get the drivers that were close to the release date of the game that you are playing. It also doesn't hurt to test a few different versions, as some drivers simply don't work well. And this is it for this video. I'll be traveling over the Christmas holidays and I know that I will be unboxing some exciting hardware. If everything goes well, I will upload a video so you can get a preview what the year 2023 will look like on my channel. With that, I wish you happy holidays and a happy new year. Give this video a like if you enjoyed the content and I will see you in one of my other videos.